So we are back again on this topic uh, ultrasonic testing and today we will see some applications but before that uh, let me also talk a little bit about uh, what kind of displays you can see uh, in ultrasonic testing. Uh, there are two or three different types of displays uh, that can be shown on the screen and uh, depending on uh, the requirement uh, one of these uh, displays can be chosen. The most uh, commonly used uh, display is in terms of the amplitude and the time that we have been uh, seeing so far and that particular display or that particular scan is known as A scan, but there are two more which are known as uh, B scan and C scan. Okay? So, let us talk about uh, them also and see how they look like. So, as I said this A scan we have already seen which is uh, a display like this amplitude plotted against time or depth and you uh, see the signal in terms of a deflection of the time base or, or a peak like this. Okay. So, this is A scan. So, this is a one dimensional view of, of the defects. Then you have B scan. And in this case, uh, this gives you a 2D profile. of the defects and uh, this display is uh, basically an imaginary section uh, through the sample wherein you can see both the back and front surface and you, you will see at what depth the defects are lying when the defect echo appears on the display. Okay. So, that is how it generates that uh, 2D profile of the defect. Okay. So, this is what it is and if you look at the displays, the display will be like this. So, the time or depth in this case now will be in the y axis because as I told the depth will be directly shown on the display and this x axis now will be scan distance. Okay. So, this will be shown on a fluorescent screen and you will see the defect echoes as fluorescing points coming into the display and staying there for some time so that you have enough time to see and visualize them. So, let us say if you have a sample like this and you have two defects at two different depths and now you have taken this probe and you are moving moving the probe on the surface. So, the moment it uh, goes over these defects, then you will see them coming in this display at that particular depth like this. Okay. Because as I said, this is an imaginary section uh, through the sample where you can see the depth, where you can see both the front face and the back face or you can see the depth. Okay. So, the, this will come as, uh, as uh, you know uh, fluorescent points on a phosphor screen So, instead of the oscilloscope screen that you have in case of A scan, in this case you have a, a phosphor 
screen where these uh, uh, defects signals will come and fluoresce at the particular depth uh, where the defect is lying. Okay. So, this is how the display is in this uh, case, in the case of B scan and the other one, the next one is uh, C scan. And in this case, uh, you have plant type uh, 2D view of the defects. And in order to generate that, uh, this has to be uh, plotted either on an XY plotter. So, the data is recorded. by an x y plotter or it can be also shown on a computer screen. which is uh, superimposed on the plan view of the sample. Okay. So, you record the data and then either you can uh, plot it on x y plotter or you can uh, show it on a screen which, which will be superimposed on the plan view and that is how this uh, plan type view will be generated. But in order to create that, in this case the data has to be recorded as a function of each of the reflecting interfaces. Unlike the previous cases where you simply uh, send the uh, ultrasonic beam and get an echo. Uh, from defects or from the other surfaces. In this case, you need to uh, collect the echoes uh, as a function of uh, the position of uh, the reflecting interface. Okay? And in order to do that, uh, you need to move the probe in a particular fashion like this. So, let us say th there is a defect uh, on this sample. So, this is the uh, side view of the sample and the top view is something like this. So, in order to generate that uh, plant type view of the defects, you need to uh, collect the data as I said as a function of uh, the position of each of the reflecting interfaces and in order to do that, you have to do the scan uh, following a particular pattern like this. Okay. So, you have to go like this in a zigzag manner. like this. and so on. Okay. So, if this defect, if you uh, see the 2D view, it may be something like this. Okay. And now, since you have uh, collected uh, the echoes as a function of each of these uh, reflecting points, okay, you will see uh, a 2D type of uh, view uh, in the display when it is finally displayed on the system. Okay. So, this is the C scan view, this is how it will look like. So, it will show that top view of the plan view and you will see a profile of this defect. at that a particular location. Okay. 
Okay, so, as I said the in this case the echoes are collected are recorded as a function of position of each reflecting interface. And with that, uh, you will get a scan and a view like this. Okay. So, these are the different types of scans or uh, views displays in case of ultrasonic testing. Now, we are going to see a very uh, useful application of this particular technique, uh, which is for uh, inspecting the welds. Okay. Welding and NDT, they go like hand in gloves. Okay. Whenever you do a welding process, uh, it is followed by NDT, so that uh, you find out if the weld is sound or not, if there is any welding defect or not. Okay. And uh, many a times uh, you would have seen uh, a welding joint like this, okay, where these two plates are joined across. So, this is the weld. Okay, and if you see the view, so this is across this interface, okay. these two plates are joined. Okay. So, this will be the weld. Okay. So, in this case as uh, you would have uh, realized, you cannot use a normal probe because in that case it will simply go like this, uh, even if you keep it on the top of this, there are uh, these uh, surfaces, the welding joint is here. So, it is not appropriate to use uh, normal probe in this case. Okay. So, what we need to do in this case, we need to use an angle probe, so that uh, you would be able to inspect these surfaces like this. Okay. So, when you have a scenario like this, where it is sent at a particular angle, what is going to happen is uh, this is going to reflect back and forth like this. So, first it will reflect uh, from the back wall and then it is again go to the top surface and then again come back like this and so on. Okay. So, that means that back wall echo that you see in case of a normal probe, you are not going to see that in this case. Okay. So, this echo will come back only when it encounters an interface which could be a discontinuity or a defect. So, when it encounters an interface, a reflecting interface, then it is going to reverse the direction and follow the same path and will come back to the probe and that is where you get an echo. Uh, from a discontinuity, which is present in the path of this beam, which is going in a zigzag manner like this because of that incident angle. Okay. So, that means in this case, as I said, you do not have the back wall, which we have used in case of normal probe as the reference. Okay. So, if you remember, our reference was always this back wall signal. This was the initial pulse and this was the back wall. and we use this back wall as the reference and we said that anything coming before the back wall like this uh, is a defect. Okay. But in this case, we do not have the back wall because the back wall signal is not going to come since it is going to go in a zigzag manner like this. Okay. 
So, that means for uh, wild inspection where you do it by angle probe, you need to find some other reference which can be used like the back wall signal. Okay. So, let us see in this case uh, what is that reference uh, that we can use to uh, characterize defects and uh, find out uh, the defect echo on the display. So, this is the incident angle and it will hit the back wall and then again go back to the top surface. So, this point when it is coming back to the top surface again is known as a node. So, this is the first node and then you will be having a second, third and so on. Okay. So, the distance uh, between this uh, first node and the probe is known as skip distance. Okay. So, this point where it uh, hits the back wall that is half of it, so that is half skip. Okay. And if, uh, if the thickness of the sample, if it is T, then uh, you could see that uh, this, if we call this uh, skip distance as S k. So, you could see this S k by 2, which is this distance by t is equal to tan theta, which gives you the skip distance as 2 t tan theta. Okay. So, this is how uh, you can find out uh, for a given thickness and for a given uh, beam angle what will be uh, the skip distance. Okay. So, what you need to do in case of uh, inspecting a weld is to keep this probe uh, at half skip and when you do that you could see that it will go all the way to the bottom of the weld and then you have to move it uh, to full skip because when you move it to full skip uh, from half skip, then it will go all the way to the top. Okay. So, if you see it, in case of the weld, let us say the weld is like this. So, when you keep it at uh, half skip, then this will go all the way to the down and this will hit the root. Okay. And then when you uh, move it to the full skip, then it will go all the way to the top. Okay. So, since you need to inspect uh, the entire weld from the root to the crown, so this is your root and this is the crown or the top, you need to move it uh, from half skip to full skip because as you could see when you move it from half skip to full skip, uh, it is going from bottom to all the way to the up. Okay. So, if you are somewhere in between uh, here then it will go to somewhere in between into the weld and if there is any defect then uh, at that 
defect interface this will reverse the direction as I said before and then it will come back to the probe. Okay. So, that is why uh, in this case uh, first of all the reference is the half skip and you need to move the probe from half skip to full skip so that you can cover the entire weld from the root to the crown. Okay. So, when you do the inspection this is how you need to move the probe. So, let, let us say this is the weld that you have over here. Okay, so, this weld you are going to inspect and uh, you need to keep that uh, probe first at the half skip. So, then it will go to the root and then uh, you have to move it to full skip as you do the inspection. Okay. So, for the entire weld you need to do this, you need to move in this fashion, you have to move from half to full, half to full and like this. Okay. It may not be the exact uh, skip distance, but you need to ensure that you are covering a distance which is uh, from half to full skip distance. So, you need to move your probe that way as I showed this particular diagram, so that you do not miss out on any portion of the weld. Okay. If you do this uh, moving the probe uh, from half skip to full skip, you can you will be covering the entire uh, weld as I said from top to the bottom. So, this is how uh, you should do uh, a weld inspection by using ultrasonic uh, angle probes and in this case your reference will be half skip. For example, if you have any defect uh, near the root, uh, you can see it with respect to the half skip. Let me show you that. Okay, so, this root uh, has a particular uh, round kind of shape and let us say the root diameter is D okay. and if you keep the probe at uh, half skip, then uh, this will go to the root okay. and uh, you will see uh, on the display you will see a signal like this. So, here also the first thing that you see is the initial pulse. And then you will have the half skip distance that distance is known uh, for a given angle and a thickness. And in this case you would see uh, since it is going all the way uh, to the half skip, you will see the echo uh, from the root at the half skip. In this fashion. Okay. So, that means this particular distance is the root diameter D. Okay. So, this is how uh, in case of weld inspection by angle beam probes the reference will be the half skip. Let us say for example, if you have a defect. Let us say you have uh, some kind of root cut or uh, lack of fusion due to which uh, there is 
some improper uh, fusion between the plates and at the root uh, there is a opening like this. So, in that case if you uh, keep your probe again at the half skip. So, even before it uh, goes to the root it will encounter this defect. Okay, because there is now an opening. And now if you see the display, your initial pulse and the half skip and it will appear before the half skip because now although you have kept it at half skip distance, but it is not going all the way to the root since uh, there is a defect over here and opening over here. So, it is stopping, it is encountering that interface which is before the root and then uh, it is going back to the probe and that is why you will see this uh, defect echo uh, coming just before the half skip. Okay. You can uh, confirm it with that uh, whether it is a, a root cut or a lack of fusion kind of defect. If you uh, move this a bit to let us say a new position like this. Okay. So, in that case this will also move closer to the half skip. So, if the first uh, position was 1 and then you have uh, moved it to 2, then this is corresponding to 1 and this will be corresponding to 2. Okay. So, by moving this you can confirm that at the root uh, there is an opening or there is a defect due to which you see this echo coming before the half skip and as you move little bit away from half skip distance this echo is also moving towards the half skip. Okay. So, this is how the half skip uh, distance acts as a reference in case of weld inspection. Okay. So, if you have any defect or something into the weld, let us say over here or over here inside the weld if you have any defect then when you uh, keep it uh, in the half skip it goes to the root and then as, as you move away from the half skip, let us say in between half skip and full skip if you keep it, then it can go and encounter these defects which is inside uh, the well and the moment it encounters this defect interface as I have said before this will uh, reverse the direction and come back to the probe and that is how you will see the defect echo. With respect to the half skip distance, so the defect echo now should appear after the half skip because in this case, as you would have seen here, this distance is more than half skip. So, in order to get a signal uh, from the defects which are inside the well or which are in between the top and the bottom of the well, then you have to keep the probe uh, more than half skip and that is how the defect will appear after the half skip in this fashion. Okay. So, this is how uh, the half skip distance will serve as a reference for inspection of welds by ultrasonic testing. Right. So, now we will see some uh, some more applications of this particular technique and then we can close this chapter. Weld inspection we have just now seen, but this can also be applied for castings, for defects like blow holes cracks 
tears, shrinkage. So, these are the most uh, commonly occurring casting defects, inclusions, etcetera. Okay. But uh, ultrasonic testing is most uh, suitable for uh, meal products uh, which are uh, given some kind of uh, shape uh, by a metal forming process uh, like uh, rolling, forging, extrusion and so on. So, these are called the meal product. So, the defects that you encounter during this uh, metal forming processes such as rolling, forging and extrusion, those kind of uh, defects can be easily uh, inspected uh, by ultrasonic testing. For example, in rolling like uh, you can have this kind of products, sheets, then uh, plates, strips. Okay, and there are different kinds of rolling defects uh, which can be inspected. Similarly, in extrusion also the kind of extrusion defects that uh, one encounters, those can be uh, inspected by uh, ultrasonic testing. Welding we have already seen, so these are the kind of uh, welding defects. that can be found out by this ultrasonic technique. Cracks and so on, okay. Then bonded joints also to find out the soundness of the joint whether the joint is good or not, there again uh, ultrasonic testing is very useful. Like uh, if you have this braced or soldered, bracing or soldering joints, or adhesive uh, bonding. So, in all these cases in order to find out whether this bonding is good or not, the soundness of the bonding whether it is good or not, uh, ultrasonic testing can be utilized. Okay. So, these are some of the applications of the, of the technique, there are many more, but uh, these are some of them. So, this will bring us uh, to the end of uh, this particular technique and uh, before we uh, close this chapter, uh, let us uh, summarize and see uh, what all we have learned uh, for this particular technique. So, first uh, we learned about the basic uh, nature of ultrasonic waves and then we saw uh, different types of waves like longitudinal and transverse or shear. Then we went on to see the basic principle of this particular technique which is uh, echo or reflection of uh, sound waves. From an interface which could be the discontinuity or the defect itself. So, then we talked about uh, something called mode conversion when you send the waves at an incident angle, a part of the longitudinal wave can convert into shear wave. And then I told you that if you want to uh, do ultrasonic inspection by using uh, angle beam, then it is better to exclude 
uh, the longitudinal wave and keep the shear wave and for that uh, we saw that uh, the incident angle has to be between the first critical angle and the second critical angle. and we derive this first critical and second critical angle based upon Snell's law. And then we learned about uh, different types of uh, transducers and the construction of the transducers. So, we learned about uh, two types, one was uh, piezoelectric uh, transducers which are uh, also known as uh, electroacoustic and then uh, we have seen one more type uh, which are known as EMAT or electromagnetic acoustic transducer. So, in this case we saw that you need a couplant to exclude the air gap uh, between the probe and the sample surface and in this case uh, we saw that in this EMT probes you do not really need couplant, uh, it is a couplant free operation. Okay. We before that we also learned about uh, the beam shape which uh, depends on this particular ratio lambda by d wherein lambda is uh, the wavelength of the sound waves and d is the size of the transducer and then we saw that uh, for all practical purposes, for all practical cases in uh, wherein the d is much larger than lambda, the beam becomes uh, directional and takes up a shape which resembles kind of a search light. Okay. Then we talked about uh, a very important aspect of uh, ultrasonic testing which is uh, calibration and then we learned how distance and area calibration are done. Okay. And in this we have also seen uh, how the angle probes are calibrated using the IIW reference block. Okay. So, these are the different aspects that we have uh, learned about this particular technique and with this uh, we can close this uh, particular chapter. So, I am going to stop here today. I will see you next time with a new topic. Till then bye bye and take care.